I have 90 seconds to introduce yourself, and we will begin with Jim Gingrich. Well, thank you, and thank you to all, everybody who's here and that's listening at home. I am Jim Gingrich. If you get in your car and you don't know where you're going, you're going to burn a lot of gas and you may not like where you end up. And if you're a city that is experiencing unrestrained growth without a plan, you end up with housing you can't afford, inadequate infrastructure, underfunded schools, higher crime, and stuck in traffic way more than you want to be. That gets worse every day here. So what have our politicians focused on? Well, they've been figuring out how to provide the largest public subsidy in the history of sport to a billionaire NFL owner. And with leadership like that, it should be no surprise that our city government is spending 60% more per resident today than it spent 10 years ago, and we struggle to keep our roads in good condition. We have become the pay more, get less city, and that needs to change. I'm not like the other candidates on this stage. I'm not a political insider. I oversaw thousands of employees and a multi-billion dollar budget about the same size as Metro, and I got to that position because I have a career of proving time and again that I got things done. We can grow as a city, and we can do it with a purpose and a plan that benefit the people of Nashville. I am going to be a mayor that works for you, not special interests, not out-of-town developers, and not the insiders. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Brooks. Good evening, Nashville, Davidson County. My name is Natisha Brooks. Many of you know me as Natisha R. Miss Brooks, proud HBCU graduate of Prairie View A&M University of the Texas A&M University System, where our motto is Prairie View produces productive people. Belmont University, that might not be your motto, but I thank you for producing a productive person, my son, who was in the third graduating law school class here at Belmont. Teachers. We are the best managers, no doubt. Police officers, you are the best managers. You restore, revitalize, and you rebound this city every day. $70,000 a year start is a great salary for you to be able to live in the city that you love, serve, and protect. Small businesses, beauticians, barbers, restaurant owners, I'm talking about you. Let's talk about your business taxes. And the property taxes need to go back to where they were before COVID. And finally, two roads diverge in a yellow wood, and yes, we will take both of them, leading them to mental health facilities. Roads leading to mental health for folks that have problems with mental illness and that cannot afford mental health care. My name is Natisha Brooks, Natisha Brooks 16 Twitter. I ask for your vote, support, your prayers, and your money. Thank you for having me, and thank you, Miss Misty, for being our escort today. Thank you, Carrie. David, my name is Freddie O'Connell, and I'm running to be your mayor. I grew up here, I love Nashville, and for the past 20 years as a neighborhood leader, nonprofit leader, transit leader, council member, I've been fighting to make the city better. Uh, 60 Second Answers is going to be a tough way to make a decision about which of us will make a great mayor. So I want you to remember two things about me. I'm prepared and I share your priorities. As mayor, we'll have a simple formula uh, about how we establish priorities in Nashville for Nashvillians. And that means more Ville and less Vegas. Over the past eight years, I've had a front row seat to our growth. As we were threatened to be overrun by bachelorettes, I, work I led made sure that Airbnb and short-term rentals couldn't cripple our neighborhoods. Work I led made sure that we tossed most of the scooter companies off of our streets and sidewalks. Most of the party buses are no longer operating on our roads. Now we have more work to do to manage our growth. I, when we couldn't pick up recycling, I got a truck, worked with neighbors, did it ourselves in our community. And most of the candidates up here, to Jim's point, vocally supported a stadium deal uh, or even work to create the tools to let the state justify overriding more of our local control. I didn't, I said no, I voted no. I chose you, I chose our neighborhoods, I chose our teachers, I chose Nashville because I want you to stay. That's why I'm running for mayor. My name is Freddie O'Connell, tonight I'll be working during your vote. Thank you so much. Thank you, Senator Yarbrough. My name's Jeff Yarbrough. For the last nine years, I've served this city in the state senate, where I have worked day in, day out on behalf of the city. I know the state, 
I know the city, I know the school system, and I know how to get things done. I don't think there's any candidate on this stage that can match my track record of achieving progress on the full range of challenges that the next mayor is gonna face. I'm running for mayor and I'm asking for your vote because you deserve a leader who's going to make Nashville work and work for all of us. That means focusing on three big priorities, keeping us safe, educating our children, and getting a handle on growth. Because the housing and transportation have not been keeping up with the pace of growth and development, life in our city is becoming too hard and too expensive. Finding a home you can afford in a neighborhood you love near schools you trust shouldn't feel like winning the lottery. And driving to work shouldn't feel like a daily obstacle course dodging potholes and construction closures. I'm going to focus day in, day out on the, providing the essential services and building the block-by-block -block infrastructure for the sidewalks, schools, parks, and greenways where people live their lives. Because Nashville can't be a great city unless we make sure it's a great place to live. Thank you, I'm Jeff Yarbrough and I ask for your vote. Thank you, Ms. Rowley. Good evening, thank you for being here. My name is Alice Rowley and I'm running to serve as our city's 10th mayor to reset the compact between our citizens and our city hall. I'm running because mothers tell me they're worried that only a quarter of our children read on grade level and I'm running because business owners are concerned with rising crime and that we have more than 200 empty officer positions. I'm running because all over the county, people tell me they don't care what your political party is if you cannot fill a pothole. So after 20 years of electing the same people, we cannot keep doing that and expect a different result. I'm a Nashville native. I'm a graduate of our Metro Nashville Public Schools. I'm the wife of a combat veteran, a business owner, a mother, and a former state economic development official. I believe that our city deserves an opportunity to not follow the recipe that has plagued too many big cities before us of higher taxes, higher crime, and a slow march to something that we no longer recognize. If you believe, as I do, that our city is worth fighting for, that this city is the home of the Fisk Jubilee singers and country music, and it cannot be acceptable to be the home of 100 homicides a year, I ask for you to look at our campaign, alicerowley.com. Thank would like you, Ms. Rowley. Thank you. Yeah. Assessor Wilhoyt. Good evening. I am Vivian Wilhoyt. I'm running for mayor of Nashville, Davidson County, and I ask you for your vote. Currently, I am the assessor of property of Nashville Davidson County and a two-term council member that represented District 29. Currently, I'm your council person. I'm a former council member and represent District 29, born in Gulfport, Mississippi. I came to Nashville 40 years ago. And here in Nashville, I attended Tennessee State University. There, I graduated, met the love of my life later, Larry Wilhoy. We have two sons. They're amazing, Leland and Larry, Leland and Furious Wilhoy. We have two dogs, Bella and Teddy. I am running for mayor because I love people and I love this city. I will work hard for you. I am looking to focus on smaller neighborhoods, excuse me, better neighborhoods, stronger neighborhoods, and stronger businesses. In stronger neighborhoods, we must close the gap in reference to the economic parity that makes our neighborhoods different. If you live in Bordeaux, you don't have sidewalks. If you live in Hillsboro, uh, Belmont, Hillsboro, you have sidewalks. That has to change. I'm also working to make sure that we have stronger businesses. Small businesses must be, must be felt to be lifted up and be felt that they can compete in this city. I am Vivian Wilhoyt. I'm working to be your neighbor. I'm Thank working you to much, be Mr. your Lord. mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Wilshire. Good evening. My name is Matt Wilshire. I'm a Nashville native and a proud graduate of Metro Nashville Public Schools. I'm running for mayor because things aren't working right for people in our city right now. And it doesn't have to be this way. We can do better. Now, back in 2010, I was the chair of the board of Hands On Nashville during the May floods. It was a tough time for our city, but I saw how effectively we can work together 
when the public, private, and nonprofit sectors are coordinated. Inspired by that experience, I left a career in finance after 15 years, and I answered the call to public service. I joined Carl Dean in the mayor's office, and over eight years, working with three different mayors, we were able to add 42,000 jobs for Nashvillians and bring the unemployment rate here down from over 8% to 2%, literally the lowest of any city in the country. Then in 2019, I joined Nashville's Housing Authority. And by working with public-private partnerships, we were able to add over 4,000 units of housing that Nashvillians could actually afford. In the last summer, I looked around, and I saw that things weren't working right in our city, and I entered the mayor's race. Now, since that time, some folks have chosen not to run, and a bunch of folks have jumped into the race, but the things that I'm focused on have not changed. I'm running for mayor to make our schools the best of any city in the country, to make Nashville the safest big city in America, and to improve the quality of life for Nashvillians. I'm Matt Wilshire. I'm asking for your vote. Together, we can do this. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wilshire. Council Member Hurt? Yes, good evening. And thank you, Belmont, for hosting us this evening. I am so delighted to be here at my alma mater where I received my master's degree. I am Sharon Hurt, an action-driven, results-oriented, proven leader. I want to restore hope and prosperity on every block in every community. I've seen Nashville turn into a tale of two cities. I live that duality every day, but that balance is the winning combination. I want to ease into the mayor's office and provide economic empowerment for all Nashvillians. Accountability and enforcement for metro departments. Stand up for civil rights, as I believe that every woman has the right to determine what happens to her body, and every person should love anyone that they choose to love. Educational excellence and reading literacy is fundamental to success. If nothing changes, nothing changes. And I am the change that this city needs. I am Sharon Hurt. I ask for your support and your vote. Please go to my website at SharonForNashville.com. I don't focus on problems, but promises. Vote Sharon Hurt. Thank you, Council Member. Senator Campbell? Are we building a place to visit or a place to live? That is what this election is about. I have been serving our city in one capacity or another for a long time, and one thing that I have learned is that campaign promises and plans have very little to do with the actual job. It's important to share your plans and ideas and visions, and please go to my website, voteheidicampbell.com, for mine. But the fact of the matter is you never know what you're going to wake up to any given morning as a mayor, and I've been a mayor. Derechos school shootings, potholes, and things we couldn't possibly imagine. But leadership is about meeting the moment. It's about meeting people where they are. It's about making the world a better place for the people we serve. That is what I have always done, and that is my promise to you and to Nashville. My cell phone number is 615-438-6338. That's 615-438-6338. Please reach out to me if you'd like to discuss the campaign or share ideas. My name is Heidi Campbell, and I ask you for your vote. Thank you, Senator. All right, it is time for our first question, and it's going to go to our first table, Jim Gingrich, Natisha Brooks, and Freddie O'Connell. As we go down the line for our rounds of questions, you will have 90 seconds again to answer these questions. Here is the first question for the first table. As Nashville has grown, the tension between providing for residents and attracting tourists has also grown. How do you plan to balance those competing needs? Mr. Gingrich? I actually think that is a bit of a false choice. Uh, our, we do need to nurture our tourism and hospitality industry. It is one of the great things about Nashville. However, we do also need to focus on the people who live here. Our tourism industry is going to thrive if, in fact, it has the support of people of Nashville. And I worry that we are losing that support. We need tourism 2.0. We need a durable tourism industry. 
One that is family friendly, not one that is based on overconsumption of 26 year olds. And we can do that. We also need to focus on the people who live here, as I said earlier. That's about affordable housing. That's about adequate infrastructure. That's about investing in our schools and ensuring that our streets are safe. These are things that we can do. We don't have to make trade-offs. This should not be about, is this a place to visit or is this a place to live? It can be both. But we need to make the right choices. And in every one of those choices, I'm gonna put the people of Nashville first. That's what we have to focus on. What is the quality of life of the people who are here? What we are suffering from right now is the absence of a plan. Whether or not we are talking about how we're gonna grow our tourism industry or how we grow this city. That's what we need and that's what I'll bring. Thank you. Ms. Brooks. Hashtag pay to park to eat. We need to make Nashville more friendly, not just to our visitors, but to the people that live here. As your mayor, we're going to focus on pay to park to eat. We don't want you to come out and have your car towed and a meal go from $40 to $250. And while we're on it, I want to talk about the artists, the musicians here that have to pay to park to play. I want to make sure that Nashville is not friendly just to our tourists, but Nashville is friendly to those that are already here. When a musician makes $300 for a gig, and by the time he pays his people out and pays for parking and a slice of cold pizza, that's not friendly to the people that are serving us for Nashville. So my answer to the question is to make sure that we are friendly to ones that are already building Nashville, that build Nashville up. And as we're talking about the hospitality industry, I ask nicely for the hospitality industry to be nice to those that give mental health. Our churches, don't charge our churches $300 a night, charge them $100 a night. Mental health is what it is all about. So that is the answer to the question. To the musicians, I hear you. To the artists, I hear you. Pay to park to eat, no way. Thank you. Councilmember O'Connell. Yeah, thanks. This is, I think <clears throat> we've heard it already a little bit. This is a choice about priorities. That is what the job of the mayor is to do, is to help establish the city's priorities. And what I've heard from our residents, the people we will be charged with representing, uh, as I've traveled the county over the past year, is two of the top concerns right now are cost of living and quality of life. It's fundamentally not a choice, but the mayor gets to choose where we invest. And the investment we just made a few weeks ago as a city was in the most expensive toy for tourists we've ever built. Uh, in fact, the finance team that came in to tell the city about the stadium uh, likened it to something that was like Las Vegas. They literally likened it to Vegas. And that's not what I think residents need right now. It's not what they want. It's not what I'm hearing. What residents are telling me they want is easier access to jobs, safer commutes, uh, that they're not worried about potholes or reckless driving. Uh, we lost more pedestrians to fatal crashes last year than ever before. And so as mayor, what I'm going to be focused on is those issues of quality of life and cost of living. We will build a transit system befitting a major American city. We're the last one that doesn't have something that helps residents get around and keep their cost of living lower. And we'll use every toolkit of the mayor's office and Metro to build more affordable housing. We will focus on our residents. Thank you. Question two goes to the next table to Senator Yarborough, Ms. Rowley, and Ms. Wilhoyt. And feel free to go one after the other after I ask this question, starting with the senator. What does affordable housing mean to you? Many people in Nashville can't afford or perhaps don't want to own their own home, but renting is so expensive, many working families or young professionals simply can't afford it. Tell me two or three specific steps you would take to make a real difference when it comes to affordable housing. Senator Yarbrough. Thanks, David. And that is a critical question that I hear about on the campaign trail every day. I texted with a friend who's a, in her 70s in Antioch yesterday who's trying to downsize but know that she has to find a way to do an all-cash offer for her smaller place to out-compete the 
the you know sort of private equity firms that are bidding on the same property. Small business owners who pay their employees well know that they're having trouble retaining because of that. So specific ideas. I helped author the legislation nine years ago to allow Metro to invest dollars in affordable housing to, and to obtain properties uh, to make a difference there. But I think we have to be honest that those are only going to be nibbling around the edges as long as we're... First, you have to start with, we have to find out how much public housing, do, um, excuse me, how much affordable housing do we have? How much affordable housing do we have? And we must create that object in knowing that it's like going to the grocery store and not knowing what you need to bring back home to eat. So you first have to find out what is it that's needed so that we can feel what is the void. Second, you have to ensure that affordable housing is affordable for all. My son lives with me. He cannot live on his own, even though he has a college degree and be able to afford even renting. So we have to look at affordable housing in the sense of making it affordable to those who are also with, uh, with a degree or has the ability to be able to not live on their own, making housing affordable. And then we have to also look at in affordable housing, who will we partner with? Thank you very much, Ms. Bullhead. Thank you. Our next question to the last table here, Matt Wilshire, Sharon Hurt, and Heidi Campbell. Here it is. Data says more than 600 people live on Nashville streets and also in our parks. As some of these encampments have grown, we have seen increasing concerns about public health and also safety. How would you balance the needs of the unhoused and also the needs of nearby neighborhoods and neighbors? Thank you for that question. It's a huge issue for our city and one that didn't just appear overnight. This is an example of a gigantic issue that we have not been focused on in a long-term systemic way. Broadly speaking, Nashville needs to have long-term plans that extend far beyond any single mayor and are actually the community's plans on how to tackle these problems, but we need immediate action. One example that we had taken was back in 2017 or 18, there were money appropriated to create permanent supportive housing for individuals experiencing homelessness. But it took four years for that building to even break ground. We need to take immediate action. Now, I think it is an absolute failure of our city and our state that we have so many folks who are unhoused. We absolutely need to provide the services to help them get their lives back underneath them. That includes things like mental health services, addiction, and for folks who've experienced debt and other housing issues, we need to be building more affordable housing. That's why I moved to the Public Housing Authority four years ago to build more affordable housing. We've had a plan, we're working on implementing that plan, it needs to be funded. But we also need to reclaim our public spaces. We can't just arrest our way out of this problem. But our parks are not campgrounds and our sidewalks are not restrooms. We need to reclaim our public spaces so they can actually be enjoyed by the citizens of Nashville. It takes a both and approach to address this issue. First, I believe that it has to be the political will of things that needs to be done and making sure that we take care of the homelessness. We do have to get to the root of the problem before we can get to the fruit of the problem. I spoke with Dr. Joseph Webb just yesterday about the Bordeaux Hospital that is vacant right now and has been for a couple of years. We've got people that have those substance abuse disorders and he is a behavioral therapist. He's done the work. We could put those people right there while he is the CEO of Nashville General Hospital. I think we missed the opportunity of utilizing the resources that we already have. We have to have the political will, be like Nike and just do it. I think it's very, very important for us to utilize vacant land and the vacant buildings that we have. If Habitat for Humanity can build a house in a day, I think we can get crews. 10, 12 crews and build spaces for us to be able to provide temporary housing for our homeless community. Many of them may be unhoused, but they are not hopeless. They get up and they go to work. Provide them with the services that they need and make sure that they are able to get into some housing. We can build pallet homes for them and do all of those things to meet their needs, get them into mental health programs, but make sure that we make them a priority and keep their dignity. 
So this is a symptom of a bigger problem. And you know, we're seeing that um, we have a lot of people in our city who are, are facing affordability problems. We have mental health issues. Everything is connected. And we all do better when we all do better. Um, and so the fact that we're seeing an increase in homelessness in our city is really telling us that there are a lot of things that we need to address. And they're all related to one another. And, um, I do agree with uh, Councilwoman Hurt that uh, mental health and um, making sure that our hospitals are success, uh, accessible is certainly one of the things we need to do to make that happen. And we also need to support our mental health courts that are doing a fabulous job of um, anti-recidivism with um, their practice of getting people um, in, on a good track um, toward, towards being able to live a good quality of life. But, you know, in the final analysis, we have to recognize the humanity in one another and we have to approach this with love and support because we all do better when we all do better. And if we don't take care of our homeless people, then, um, then we're not taking care of Nashville. Thank you. Okay, this next round is our lightning round question. So all nine candidates will answer. You will have 30 seconds, just 30 seconds to answer. We will begin with Senator Campbell and then work our way this way. Please feel free to jump in, right, one right after another. Here's the question. 56% of respondents of a recent Vanderbilt poll say Nashville is headed in the wrong direction. Do you agree? And what's one thing that you would do to change that perception? So I'm a mom and I think that one of the best things that we can do is clean up our room. Um, Nashville, people feel bad about the potholes. We feel bad about our environment. Um, so I think that, that 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 is where we start, by cleaning up our room, cleaning up the litter, um, taking care of the potholes, and making sure that people are feeling good about where they live. I would change the way people see the word minority. Minority is not race-based, but it's needs-based. It's about humanity, making sure that the disabled veteran has housing, making sure that the person in the woman out in Madison who has three children have health care, ensuring that the LGBTQ person is able to get the job that they want. I believe it is about black and white and others, but I think it's about needs. It's not about the right track or the wrong track, but I did get into this race now 10 months ago because I saw there were a lot of things that just weren't working in Nashville. And a big part of that was a lack of public trust. One thing that I will absolutely do is tell you the truth. I will tell you the truth when it's a good thing and when it's a bad thing, when it's a hard thing and when it's a celebration. I will tell you the truth. We have to increase public trust. That's trust between the city and the state, between the citizens and the government, between companies and the people who work there, I will increase trust. One of the things that needs to change about Nashville, even though we're strong, we have great things that are great about Nashville, but there are things that we need to definitely invest in and change. One of the things is diversity in the job, in the workforce. When we're talking about extending the, di the diversity in Nashville's workforce, we have to be intentional. We cannot just not be fair in reference to who gets the job, who gets the increase, and who we hire. We must be fair. We must be intentional. Ms. We Mahoy, must invest in our workforce in Nashville. Yep, the voters are right. The city is going in the wrong direction. And I think a lot of that is having leaders who think that the purpose of City Hall is to bring national politics here. In my City Hall, we will not have a pro-life rally and we will not have a pro-choice rally. We will be completely focused on a pro-first graders reading rally, a pro-filling the potholes rally, and a pro-fixing our debt. That is the job of the city, and we need to get out of the business of nationalizing City Hall. I don't believe that Nashville's on the wrong, wrong track. I think that there are people that are disappointed in the way certain things are going, but most of us can't imagine living anywhere else. I do think that we need to be much better about demonstrating how the government can respond to people's day-to-day -day needs. So we have an amazing start of a system in our hub, Nashville, 
that allows the government to respond quickly to those issues that pop up in your neighborhood when broken streetlights and those things. We need to make that even more robust and more used across the county. Thanks. This is maybe the fundamental question that got us all here. Uh, if we all thought it was going great, uh, we wouldn't be running. And this is where we sit right now is I live these frustrations. I've had a flat tire from a pothole recently. I've spent the past few weeks working with people who still can't get their trash picked up on time or reliably. Uh, and we're dealing with road closures all over the place. We're unmanaged and uncoordinated with our growth. This is the biggest thing we can demonstrate as a metro government is that we can coordinate and offer customer service. One thing we didn't address regarding homelessness, we have a huge opioid and fentanyl crisis. It's an epidemic. And this is what's leading to our mental health crisis that we have in Nashville. So I will be addressing those issues first. Second, gentrification. The mobility rate of students and families having to move from place to place because of being, the rent is too high. And because some of us on this stage we promoted our taxes doubled. So that's one of the thing, two things that we would address. Let's respect the people who say we're going in the wrong direction. The fact is, if you grow without a plan, people are saying my quality of life is worse today than it was. And they're frustrated because issues like affordable housing, we know what to do. We have done multiple studies on this. They're sitting in a three ring binder. We haven't done anything. Where I come from, you don't get paid to study a problem. You get paid to solve a problem. And as mayor, that's what I'm going to do. Thank you so much. Now we're on to round two, and this round of questions will go to Ms. Brooks, Ms. Rowley, and Councilman Hurt. Again, they each have 90 seconds to answer. Five years ago this month, voters overwhelmingly rejected a transit plan that would have brought light rail to Nashville. Fast forward to today, and WeGo Transit says our city's bus and train system is chronically underfunded, with an operating budget far less than similar sized cities. What one or two things will you do as mayor to help alleviate traffic congestion? Ms. Brooks. Thank you. First, we need to, I am in favor of light rail and fast bus tracking, but it's not what I want, it's what the voters want. What happened five years ago, it was a book. When we got ready to go to the polls to vote about it, nobody really understood what was going on. We have to do something when it comes, oh, I'm talking about Murfreesboro, Williamson County, uh, Wilson County, those that are coming in. We can't be in traffic for an hour, hour and 40 minutes. So once again, it's not what I want, it's what the voters want. Make it simple, make the language simple that the voters can understand what they're voting on. And the other thing is we need to look at those that l live within the city, biking, walking, it's very dangerous right now. Look how many accidents that we have had. So we need to focus on those that are walking, those that are biking, and then bus. Our city bus drivers, I, bus drivers, I'm looking out for you too. You need a raise too. We need to make sure that our lights are synchronized, that we are not sitting at one light for one minute, another light for 20 seconds, and then another light, for instance, Bell Road, Antioch. It's been like that for years and nothing has been done about it. So synchronizing our lights will help alleviate some of the traffic. Thank you, Ms. Rowley. Yep, thank you for that question. The first area I think that all uh, drivers in Nashville wanna look at is around adaptive signal technology that we can upgrade that and make our uh, traffic commute a little bit cleaner. The second is around crosstown busing and increasing those routes so that we're not sending those buses into the downtown core. The third and the single most important one which you touched on, David, is the spectacular failure of Nashville in 2018 when we took a go it alone approach. Moving forward, a coalition of about 21 county and city mayors has said that the single biggest priority for our next mayor is to secure and help secure dedicated transit funding. Nashville is one of only 25 metro areas in the country that doesn't have dedicated transit funding. That means we are leaving dollars on the table, both at the state and the federal level that we cannot leverage until we get that funding in place. I have already been to meet with many of our regional mayors, including the leader of the 70 county mayor caucus, 
and we know our citizens are smart. The way we are going to get dedicated transit funding is to not do it alone in Nashville, but is to work regionally and each of our regional county mayors to collectively also work to get those dedicated transit dollars. And I will meet whomever the next president or her transportation secretary is of whatever political party to get those federal dollars here for our city. Thank you. Council Member Hurt. Thank you so very much. You know, I served on a regional transportation uh, committee and I suggested that we provide some tolls at those county lines, but they didn't like that too much. So I said, let me go back and figure out what we could do. And what I think we might do is take those HOV lanes, dedicate them for those coming in from those different counties and let them go and speed is dedicated for them, ensuring that they do the right speed and keep that traffic flowing. I also don't like seeing those big buses in Bellevue where they have three people on the buses. I think we need to take all of those buses and put magnet schools, those magnet high school students on those buses and reduce hundreds of cars being on the road. Also, I believe we can have flex times flex schedules in our schools, particularly with the magnet schools, and as those uh, kids are younger, start school earlier, and they get out earlier in order for the parents to be able to get them there. But those who can manage themselves, I believe that they can extend a, a later time for getting to schools. I also wanna make sure that we have a response time, reduce this response time for accidents, because they hold up traffic for hours at a time when there's an accident. And those are the three things that I would like to do as mayor. Thank you. Thank you very much. This next question will go to Freddie O'Connell, Vivian Wilhoyt, and also Heidi Campbell. Several bills passed this session by the Tennessee legislature, primarily around LGBTQ rights, could lead some people to believe that Tennessee, and therefore Nashville, is no longer welcoming. How will you address these concerns? Yeah, it's a tough moment because the state is uh, acting out against our cities. And it's not just Nashville, but it was this session, especially Nashville. I think it, this hasn't always been the case, but now it has become the job of the mayor to defend our residents. And so as mayor, I will continue doing the same thing I've done for quite some time now on Metro Council, which is speaking up and standing with all of our Nashvillians because we are Tennesseans. In fact, we are almost 10% of Tennesseans and we deserve to be treated as such by our peers in the General Assembly. Uh, this session was particularly difficult with anti-drag, anti-trans, uh, you know, bills that also, they're beyond that, we saw bills affecting how we even talk about a variety of cultural issues across the state. Um, you know, as, as mayor, it's also important for us to understand that we have leverage. When the state was encroaching on our local authority at the convention center, at the airport authority, at the sports authority as we were negotiating a deal on a new stadium, the mayor had the opportunity to say, we're not going to even press forward with things that you want from us until we have assurance that you're going to back off of these bad bills. As mayor, I want to make sure we know our leverage, know our strength, and defend our residents. As mayor, I will use my voice to stand for the rights of everyone. There is no reason for someone to be disrespected because they're gay, LGBTQ, or have a different belief in reference to who they love or who they want to be with. I fumble some other questions tonight. But this question, there is no doubt in my mind, as mayor, as the love that I have for people, I will use my voice to protect and to speak out. When it comes to differences in people, as a black woman with two black sons, I understand that when you're talking about treating someone different. So we will continue, at me as mayor, I will continue to speak out and speak for those who are being disrespected. 
while there may be legislation that we cannot go up against with the supermajority at the state, we can fight. We can do that. We can let people know that we will not stand for any of our citizens to be mistreated as they're here in our city. It is wrong to mistreat someone all because of who they want to love. As mayor, I would be your voice to stand for that. So in this relentless march towards authoritarianism that I've been feeling um, as a senator up at the legislature, um, I felt like Nashville is kind of the tip of the spear. And um, I was really blown away by the trans people that came and testified in committee because they were so brave. And my office was their safe space. I had a jar of candy for them and, and some Kleenex and, and they would uh, come and cry in my office or eat candy or do whatever they needed to do to sort of to recharge. Um, it is not okay to otherize anybody in our state and it has been absolutely a horrible thing to watch um, not just the anti-LGBTQ but the, um, the racist um, uh, legislation and you know quite frankly we forget sometimes that women's reproductive rights were taken away from them a year ago and that is not acceptable and so even though the mayor does not necessarily influence the policy decisions um, the bully pulpit absolutely is something that we have to employ to make sure that we make people know that that's not okay. Thank you very much. Our next question, this round goes to Jim Gingrich, Jeff Yarbrough, and Matt Wilshire. Uh, Governor Lee has signed into law a bill that eliminated community oversight boards. What should the mayor's office do to keep communications open between Metro Police and the public? Mr. Gingrich. Well, I would say a couple of things. First, uh, I was visiting Warner Elementary last week, and I got into a conversation with third graders, and I asked them, what is the single thing that we need to do as a city? And what did I hear from these eight-year-olds? More kindness, less knives, no more stabbing, love no shooting, less killing. That's what's on the mind of our eight-year-olds today. We do have a public safety issue. Now, we do need oversight of our police, but it is a false premise that our police cannot do their job and at the same time keep our city safe. Safety is job one of every mayor. And as mayor, I am gonna properly resource and fund our police force. I'm going to lobby like crazy our legislature for common sense gun legislation. And I'm going to invest in our youth. We need to have a comprehensive crime prevention strategy that targets our youth. I'm going to have an office of public safety that deploys strategies that are proven success, su successful elsewhere to reduce the crime in our communities. That is what I will do. Thank you. Thank you. The legislative decision to overrule the will of Nashville's voters is nightmarish when you're talking about building trust. And trust isn't just something that we want, it's something that we need. Uh, when you don't have trust between your police force and the people that they're sworn to protect, it is a critical failure moment for, uh, for, for your city. So I think one of the first priorities of the next mayor, and really this work I hope is going on right now, because with the elimination of the Community Oversight Board, it is now more incumbent than ever for the city, the police chief, the officers, and all of us who are working in the, in the city to really focus in on how are we gonna have the transparency, oversight, and accountability that we need to make sure that people feel like there's uh, a, a, a community that builds trust. I want to have the, a fully staffed and police force with the most well-trained and well-compensated officers in the country, but I think that that goes hand-in-hand hand with having trust. 
And I think part of what we're going to have to do in this environment with the state is we know that laws are going to change, but the leadership of our city is going to have to find another way to make sure that we're serving our citizens and filling, fulfilling their will. Thank you. I think, that it was, I think that it was the wrong decision for the legislature to overturn what 60 plus percent of the citizens of Nashville voted in favor of. That kind of preemption is a mistake and does lead to this erosion of trust. I think that transparency and sunshine and looking at what our incredible police officers do and judging it fairly brings light to the incredible work that so many in the police department are doing. You know who the people are who most want folks who make mistakes in the police department to be held accountable are? Other police officers because they know that sullies their reputation. We should have an openness. We should believe enough in what we're doing to have truth and trust and transparency. And a well-functioning, well-funded community oversight board provides that. It was a mistake. As mayor, I will make sure that we still have appropriate engagement between the citizens and the police force. Now, let me be very clear, because I think so often community oversight boards are viewed as attacks on our police officers. And our police officers are under attack way too often. They do an incredible job, and we saw that on March 27th, the bravery and the professionalism that our police department exhibited. That's what we need to shine a spotlight on, how great they do. As mayor, that's what I commit to you to do. Thank you. We are ready for our next lightning round of questions. That means everybody will get the chance to answer this question and you only get 30 seconds. And I like this question, here it is. What is something that we are not talking about enough in this race? We're gonna start with you, Jeff Yarbrough. We're gonna work our way down and loop back around. Go ahead. Child care, child care, child care. So 14 years ago when we had our, when my wife was pregnant with our first child, Jack, we started looking around and realized we should have put him on a wait list for child care three years before he was conceived. That doesn't work for anybody and everybody should know that. We need to really be talking about that because there are things that local government can do from fixing zoning to actually incentivizing this and really making sure that when you're intentionally picking office sites that you're putting child care along with where, where the city's growing. Yeah, so uh, I believe that every day we have to wake up thinking about if our children are reading. Um, right now, only a quarter of our kids in Metro Nashville Public Schools are reading on grade level. Today, the most recent report came out from the state. We are 95th of all 95 counties on our high school graduation preparedness. This means that our children are not getting the maximum wage jobs that are coming to our city and that we are dooming them to an unacceptable future. Economic parity in neighborhoods. That's what we're not talking about. We're talking about economic parity in neighborhoods of two neighborhood districts that are sitting in the same tax district but not getting the same services. Let's take Bordeaux and compare it to Belmont Hillsboro. They, put, they pay the same tax rate. But do you believe that in Bordeaux, has the same infrastructure as Belmont Hillsboro? No, they do not. We need to be talking about economic parity in neighborhoods, making it fair for all neighborhoods to be safe and Thank secure. You. I think the issues that we care about are pretty much the same. I think what you wanna hear from is who has the skills to be the mayor of Nashville. The Metro is a really complex organization now got a $3 billion budget, 17,000 employees between schools and MNPS and the Metro government. There's 56 different departments and 81 boards and commissions. I think we ought to be talking about who has the executive leadership experience to be able to lead the city and manage it through this next important phase of the city's history. I think that Nashville is a city of hope. I came here as a student songwriters, musicians, all of us came here expecting for our dreams to come true. And Nashville fulfills that promise. And I think we need to talk about those good things that's happening. We have hundreds of people coming here every week. 
And I think we need to make it better for all Nashvilleians and let them know their dreams can come true. Well, with the caveat of saying that I agree with what everyone said, and for the purposes of keeping it interesting, I will talk trash. Um, so I, I served on the Solid Waste Board. Trash is a huge problem. Our landfills are all at capacity. We uh, really have to do about something about that. And I think um, I've been talking to Eastman about bringing, the plant here, bringing a plant here to upcycle our plastics. Um, and really, we have to focus more on our, our environment in general. I think that we need to message um, reuse and reduction and taking care of our water and air. Well, I agree with Matt. I actually think we might want to elect somebody who's actually run something once in their life, and I have. The, the city government is large. We are spending 60% more for every resident than we spent 10 years ago, and we need to talk about that. We are not getting enough from our city government. The challenges we have today are much more complex. We can't run the city like we ran it 30 years ago. We have to figure out how are we going to run the city to deal with the challenges we have today. And that's not because people aren't working their butt off. It's because we need the right leadership. And I'm glad you said that because teachers are the best executive people. <laughs> I'm glad you said that. We're the best executors. We're not talking enough. I want to work with the National, Nashville Education Fund Foundation. We need more male teachers. We need more minority teachers in the classroom to deal with our Kurdish community, our Buddhist, uh, Bhut uh, Bhutanese community, our Indian community, our Latino community. Our students need to feel needed. And to feel needed, you need to send a real executor to the mayor's office, a teacher. One of the things that a mayor does in addition to uh, steer our spending priorities with local operating budget and capital is we've had incredible federal opportunities. The CARES Act, the American Rescue Plan Act have brought hundreds of millions of dollars, unprecedented amounts. Still out in front of us are the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act and Inflation Reduction Act. And if we are 10 years out, it's going to be hard to remember what we did with the money we had in hand. And I think as mayor, we want to make sure we use the opportunities in front of us to build the city of the future. Thank you. This next question goes to Vivian Wilhoit, Jim Gingrich, and Sharon Hurt. A lot of the candidates talk about what they want to fund, but there are trade-offs. So what would you cut out of the current metro budget to fund your priorities? Ms. Wilhoit. Oh, that'd be difficult to cut out something of our budget when it all when there's some, it's something always in our budget that's going to be able to help um, one part of Nashville. What would I cut out in our budget? Well, I would cut out waste that, would, um, that is not going to impact, that is not going to help our Metro employees. And when I say cut out something, which specifically that would be, what I want to help is Metro employees to be able to be paid competitively. For years, Metro employees from time to time have gone without pay raises. And it's, um, it's important that we provide a pay raise to Metro employees and teachers every year. Not just in a year when we think that we're doing well, we have to do well when we are supporting our Metro employees and that helps our city stay strong. Investing in our Metro employees is very important to me and which is what I've done when I went into the Assessor of Properties office in 2016. When you talk about someone who's living on a salary of 32 to $33,000 in 2016 and not getting a raise to be paid competitively, wow, how is that possible? We have to continuously fund where our Metro employees will benefit. They are the reasons why we have a great city. They are the reasons why this city is what it is. And they are the reasons why we need to continue to pay them competitively and do the and give and be able to attract the best Th and the brightest. Much. That is why I do it with that is what I would Th do. Thank you, mayor. Mr. Gingrich. Thank you. In the business world, you're not afraid to spend money as long as you get a return on that investment. And I'm not afraid to spend money. But you also have to be fiscally responsible. As I said, we do have a three plus billion dollar budget. It's going to 3.3 billion this year. It is up significantly on a per resident basis from what it was 10 years ago. We have more Metro employees today per resident than we've ever had. With this new budget, we'll have nearly 20% more per resident than we have ever had. 
I will do what I did in the business world. We will go through that budget line by line. We don't start with what did you spend last year and let's add on to it. We start with where are we adding value and are we doing the things that improve the lives of the people who live here? It's that simple. I've done it time and time again, and we can do it for the city of Nashville. Now, there are other opportunities. Freddie just touched on a number of them. We need to do a better job of working with the state and working with the federal government because there are a lot of dollars out there. But we also need to modernize the way we run metro government because we have big challenges and we need to have the government of 2053, not the government of 1993. And that's what I'm going to do. We need to start to get things done. We need to start to lead. And let's focus on the people of Nashville. Thank you. Council member. You know, I just cannot, in all honesty, cut the budget. We spent um, many years trying to get the budget in place and in a good spot where we are doing well as a city. And we are there. I would do some redistribution because we have where there are more who are receiving and those who less receive. And I would try to provide more balance within that budget, making sure those departments like our social services departments and our parks departments are receiving the kinds of funds that they need. Many of those employees there are doing work that's somewhat just disgusting, like having to clean up the Brookmead Park after the homeless encampment, encampment was removed. I would make sure that those individuals were being able to receive the kinds of funding that they need, the resources that they need in social services, making sure that we don't have too much uh, excess in our departments like our MTA and able to put it in other places and making sure that it is utilized properly in order to serve best our people throughout Metro government and throughout our county. Thank you. Our next question goes to Heidi Campbell, Jeff Yarbrough, and Matt Wilshire. We're going to talk a little more trash, Heidi. Middle Tennessee does have a trash problem. Landfills are filling up and communities have been reluctant to open new ones. How will you address the regional solid waste needs of Nashville? We'll start with you, Heidi. So I love this question. I served on the Greater Nashville Regional Council as the mayor of Oak Hill and served on the mayor's caucus. And as uh, Ms. Raleigh said, this is really a regional issue. And a lot of these issues are regional. You know, Nashville has become a greater regional area. And um, so on the Mayor's Caucus, I actually brought trash to that organization because they did, they, trash was not on their agenda at that moment. And uh, we developed a zero waste master plan. Um, and, you know, Nashville's waste is mostly compostable. Um, so I think composting plant is one thing that we can do to actually address that. Another thing is to have, um, we're not going to pass, I'm, I'm running an extended producer responsibility act to get rid of plastics, but I can just tell you right now, it's not going to pass because I, I understand our state government pretty well. So, um, so I'd like to bring Eastman here and have them open a plant to upcycle plastics into buildables. Um, because that's actually something that could create jobs and um, address the really horrible issue we have of plastic waste. Because let me just tell you, our recycling is not getting recycled. And it's very important that people understand that. Um, and then I also look at education and messaging and make sure that people, and especially starting in our schools, know that reduction, reuse um, should happen before recycling and that we need to pay attention to where our trash goes. We're not just throwing it away and it magically disappears. Thank you. This is another example where we have long-term challenges that our city's facing and yet we have no long-term plans. We need to have long-term plans that extend beyond any mayoral organization, any mayoral administration, but reflect immediate actions. So the first thing that we'll do is have a long-term plan that's community-driven, that's buy-in, but has buy-in from the entire community about how we're going to move forward on this. 
What are the projections about how much waste we're, we're uh, producing? What are the projections about how we're going to be able to reduce and reuse that? How we're going to be able to minimize it? And then we're going to take immediate action. The three most important steps to immediate action are first, to compost waste that is food waste that actually can be turned into energy cost effectively. Keep that out of the landfill, produce energy out of it, produce fertilizer out of it, instead of dumping it and burying it and mixing it in with other things that we can't possibly use. The second is to increase recycling. There are significant investments that companies like waste management are willing to make in increasing the recycling capacity at our landfills. We need to encourage more recycling so that less of it is getting dumped and more of it is getting uh, recycled. And third, we need to have a long-term plan about how we deal with construction waste. Again, this is something that cropped up. We found out last summer that all of a sudden they were going to close to new construction waste. We need to work to minimize the construction waste so it's not getting commingled and we're not missing out on opportunities to reduce and reuse that. Thank you. Senator Yarbrough. You know, running from air will take you to the strangest places. I actually organized a, a field trip for myself this week to go visit uh, a landfill just to actually see what, what we're talking about and to talk to some of the people who are working in this area so that we can understand the path forward. Look, this is something that we have to think about as a region. It's not just Nashville that is having this problem. Rutherford County is having it. Dixon County is having it. Williamson County is having it. We are facing a crisis that, we're, that we need to address. It's not that we actually don't have any plan the Nashville Solid Waste Board did put together a plan. We haven't taken any of the steps to implement that plan. We actually really do need to see much more aggressive recycling centers put into place. We do need a strategy for uh, how we're going to de recover much more and of our construction demolition waste and put a lot less of it in the landfill. But that's going to take working with industry to make sure that we actually have end users for those products. We have to do a lot more, and it's going to take working regionally and with the state at TDEC to build out a plan that's going to actually work and decrease the cost. But if we're not going forward on our zero waste plan, we also have to make sure that there's a place for the trash to go. And you can't just fall asleep at the switch and, per and pretend that things are going to be better and not have a landfill space. So it's going to take real leadership and hard leadership to get this right. Thank you very much. Our next question goes to Alice Rowley, Natisha Brooks, and Freddie O'Connell. If you're elected mayor, what will be the most important idea or innovation you'll bring to office? Ms. Rowley. Oh. Wow. <laughs> that is a great question. The most important idea or innovation. Uh, I think right now the most important idea or innovation is tackling our debt and our lurking debt. Um, that folks even within the administration who have done a pretty good job at resetting some of our fund balances and raising uh, our um, ratings with the various financial agencies. The biggest lurking challenge we have as a city is the debt. Today we have $413 million in our current budget that we send towards debt service. That's about 20 times the amount of dollars that we're spending on things that folks on this stage have said are very important, things about taking care of some of our most vulnerable residents. But if we have more debt as a single county than the entire state of Tennessee combined, who spends $342 million in this budget on their entire debt service, we one county, $413 million. That scares me for how we leave this city to my children into your grandchildren. So I believe that we have to take a reset around, and it may not sound innovative, but it is actually starting to say, let's take a pay-as-you-go approach instead of a kick-the-can-down-the-road approach. Thank you very much. Ms. Brooks. All roads leads through teachers, the best executors. That's why I'm asking for your vote. Teachers. Let's do away with the proxy test. If you have a degree, let's get you to teaching. We're short on teachers. I don't believe that a teacher that has a college degree needs to take several tests to get into the classroom. So let's do away with the proxy test. Also, IT workers, we need you. You may not have a teacher's license, but we can give you a stipend so that you can be innovative and use your creative thoughts to give students the future that they could have like you have. 
And last but not least, I was at H.G. Hill's school today. We need to have programs, wonderful program over there, to make sure that children are not going from third grade to the pipeline to prison. So innovative, get rid of the proxy tests. We need classroom teachers and we need them now. And we need to have, make sure that classroom teachers have a wage in which they can live in the city that they serve and teach. As you can well see, teachers, I'm fighting for you. I'm fighting for your lifestyle. I'm fighting because you do more for anybody than any business person or politician can ever say. My name is Natisha Brooks, NatishaForNashville.com. I approve everything I just said, and I hope you do too. <laughs> Thank you very much. Councilman O'Connor. Thanks. O'Connor. The, um, I mentioned a, a little bit ago the ideas of coordination and customer service. And my background in the private sector is actually on the side of software and technology. And you work a lot in data and project management to deliver things. And part of uh, the, the process there is troubleshooting. And that means being able to anticipate problems. Metro has incredible capacity not to wait until we get told about a problem. Right now, today, our utility doesn't know when a street light is out unless somebody reports it. There's a cost-effective program to start to move to more modern street lights so that we know when the street lights are out, when they go out. Those kinds of things are big ideas. They seem small, but taken as a system, suddenly streets are safer, uh, there's less danger out there. Similarly, as we try to rebuild confidence to bring those wrong track numbers back up so that everybody feels good about it, the coordination is how we help people in a city where people are struggling. We just had a great success from legislative work led by Representative Love and Senator Act Berry that let us raise the income threshold for people to participate in our property tax freeze program. But for years, we've waited for people to come in and participate instead of going out and saying, who's probably eligible? We have all that data across multiple metro departments. We can go to them. Even better than that, we can encourage participation in our financial empowerment centers, which offer free counseling for anybody, regardless of income. We've eliminated millions of dollars of debt and increased savings, and that's a good thing. We can coordinate all of those things. Thank you. Our time is winding down, so this next lightning round will be 15 seconds. Straightforward, easy question. I don't know if it's easy, but it's straightforward. What figure in Nashville history should the community know more about? We'll start with Matt Wiltshire and work our way around. Go ahead. Who got us the right to vote, got women the right to vote uh, around women's suffrage. Uh, it was an incredible story about how it changed our country and there should be much more uh, highlight on all that they did, uh, all, the, the whole group that did to uh, add women the vote. I would say more about the black excellence and particularly in technology. Uh, there was a, a, an engineer, Jesse Russell, who was a part of creating the cell phone, who is a graduate of Tennessee State University. And I don't think many people know that. And I think for us to know that, and I also would like to Thank you. mention- That's 15 seconds. It I'm goes sorry, by Ralph Boston. I'm sorry about his death. All right, Senator Campbell. I'll tag off Matt's comment and just tell you that that kid's name was Harry Burns. He was a young man whose mom told him to do the right thing and vote for women to get the vote. And that actually changed the trajectory of women in this country because it was in Tennessee that we made the decision to ratify the vote. Thank you. Good boy. Mr. Gingrich. Our civil rights history is so rich and the fact that 21, 20 year olds can have the courage that we did back in 1960 is unbelievable. The fact that you have a Diane Nash in this city that when somebody tried to set up a uh, professorship in her name said it needed to be about the movement, not about her, and, and that is it. leadership. Ms. Brooks. It's all about the hats. Senator Thelma Harper, a legend. What she did in the community, what she did, again, with all the groups of the community, a legend. Senator Thelma Harper. Councilman Rocano. Yeah, we're, we're at a point in Nashville's history where so many of our uh, the people that were a part of Metro over the past 60 years, we're losing some of our, the fabric of our civic conscience. And Charlie Strobel is one of the people that I think has elevated so many, and you can kind of see a saint coming sometimes. So I'd say Charlie Strobel. 
Senator Yarbrough? Love that answer, but uh, I would say that Z Alexander Luby is somebody who sh we should have a city and state holiday honoring this civil rights leader who was one of the lawyers who uh, de led desegregation efforts and civil rights efforts. His home was bombed in April of 1960, which led that, uh, which spurred the march that ultimately led towards uh, the desegregation of our lunch counters. He's a, a true hero of the city. Ms. Rowley. Catherine Drexel, who came here to open one of the first schools to educate black children when our city leaders would not. We have much to learn from outsiders coming in and elevating what's possible. The unsung heroes of the civil rights movement. One of the civil rights mem uh, member that I had heard from, uh, that I understand was not able to have children after she rode the bus from Nashville to Birmingham. That unsung hero we need to know about today and sing her praise. Thank you. Thank you, we're at our final question now and we're actually gonna go from 90 seconds to a minute and 15 due to time. So apologies to the candidate, but we're gonna go from Mr. Gingrich and go all the way down to Senator Campbell. One of the biggest challenges facing the next mayor will be our relationship with the state. Why are you the best candidate to restore the relationship between Nashville and the state of Tennessee? Mr. Gingrich. How ridiculous is it that we are in the situation that we are in where we have politicians who are looking to score political points rather than actually serve the people they were elected to serve. I'm not a political insider and I'm not gonna play politics. This is about more than just building the relationship with the governor's office in the legislature. If we, if we think about our region, we are 50% of the economic growth of the state in the last 10 years. We're all tied together in the same economic ecosystem. And if we're gonna solve problems in the region, for example, regional transit, we need a much stronger relationship than we have today with the surrounding counties and the mayors of the cities in those counties. Similarly, we share many of the same concerns as other cities across the state. Chattanooga has an affordable housing challenge. So does Dixon. So does, so does Cook, Cooksville, Cookville. We need those relationships because we need to start to have dialogue with the state about how to solve these issues across the state, not just as Nashville by ourselves. Thank you, Mr. Gingrich. Ms. Brooks. Yes. If we don't start GAU, it won't be any NK. I need the council, WO, to work with the RK, the legislature, put it together, work together. Senator Paul Bailey came to visit me in the green room, which is one of my favorite senators, Senator Pody, Senator Hensley. As you can see, I have a working relationship and to send a mayor that already knows people there, that are already in touch, I've already worked walk the legislative halls, and we'll continue doing that for you teachers. Send a teacher as your mayor to the legislature. We're gonna harp on that till you get it. NatishaForNashville.com, Natisha Brooks 16 Twitter. A relationship, what is a relationship? I'd rather eat a bowl of soup with a friend than to eat a steak with the enemy. Let's not make enemies of each other. Let's bring ourselves together. Me and you make sense. Send someone that has a working relationship already with many of those that are in the state legislature. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Le League of Women Voters, too. Thank you, Councilman. Yeah, I, I'll give an unorthodox answer here, I guess, and that I think anybody who tries to persuade you that they figured it out is either bad at it or lying. Um, this has been the toughest season for state and local relationships. And I don't think anybody up here has a great answer for what to do, but I'll tell you what I think is worth trying. Uh, we have backed away from our approach to regionalism. As a former board member of Cumberland Region Tomorrow, uh, I did work with uh, people in the cities and counties around Nashville in our 10 county region. Um, we have a mayor's caucus. I want the Nashville mayor to be deeply invested in that process because when our counties are working together and working with their respective delegations to the General Assembly, we have a better shot of working then also with Nashville's major cities across the state. This doesn't just have to be a Nashville problem. 
And it is also worth just investing in the relationships as a council member, not going rogue, not with an ass, not with something trying to go poke somebody in the eye over. I've gone and met with senior advisors to Governor Lee, with Lieutenant Governor McNally, with Speaker Sexton. Those things need to continue. It's going to take working with both chambers constantly, and it's also going to take what I mentioned before, willingness to defend our interests. Thank you, Senator. This is not a business as usual mayor's election. The conflict between the state and the city right now is unprecedented and is a threat to virtually all of the priorities that the city's facing. We're not facing a choice as a city between a, a mayor who is going to fight back when, the, when there's overreach or na negotiate peace with the state. The next mayor has to do both at the same time. And there's no one in this city who has more experience doing either than I do. I have been up there for nine years, and when there has not going to be a moment when there's legislative overreach that targets our people, our values, our, our interests, that I will sit idly by and let that happen. But I've also worked across the aisle, bridge division, found common ground to sponsor and pass over 80 pieces of legislation to work with people across the aisle and build those coalitions across the state and across the city so that we're in a much better place to achieve progress, whether that's regulating party buses or taxing tourists to pay for downtown or create tools to invest in affordable you, housing. Senator. That's the work I've done as Ms. senator and what I'll do as mayor. I do believe that I'm uniquely qualified in this moment. Um, and I start, I guess, with thinking the highest point in the county is named for my great-grandfather, Ganyer Ridge at, Al uh, at Radnor Lake. It's named because a group of citizens got together and stopped caring about who got the credit for making that a park and started c caring about getting the result. That's a state park. Most people here don't care that it's a state park or a city park. They care that our residents have a great park. So I think the first act is taking the ego out of it. I have gone hunting with Senator Nicely in Strawberry Plains. I've served chili with Senator Yeager in Roan County. I actually believe that you can love Nashville and love Tennessee. I believe that we can get more done when we start to look at, it, at our partners that have a $55 billion budget next to my $3 billion budget. I believe that our citizens are better today because we have free community college paid for by the state. And I believe that the babies of Davidson County today are better off because we are the first state to pay for diapers through 10 care. So find the problem and create the result. Ms. Wilhite. You know, Pat Summit said that sometimes you can learn a lot from losing than you can from winning. And when you're losing, you have to re-examine what you're doing, something to that effect. We need to do a hard reset in reference to setting our relationship and building our relationship with the supermajority Tennessee General Assembly. And I do believe that I am that consensus builder. We all know that what happened in reference to why this relationship faltered is due to a vote against the Republican National Convention. Nashville is a city for all people. Nashville is a welcoming city. Whether it's for the DNC, the RNC, black, white, short, tall, gay, straight, and all in between, we are a welcoming city. We need a consensus builder that will do the right thing and have a hard reset set from someone that they know Thank you, Ms. that can make this possible. Mr. Wilshire. Thank you for the question. Thank you for moderating. Thank you to all of you for being with us here tonight and to Belmont and the other hosts. You know, a number of the folks on this stage have been involved in the political food fights over the last decade. They've been the ones throwing the spears back and forth. Over the last decade, I've been in the executive branch getting things done, getting things done for Nashvillians, adding jobs for Nashvillians, working with our partners at the Tennessee Department of Economic and Community Development. 
building affordable, attainable housing for Nashvillians, working with our partners at THDA, the State Department for Housing and Development Agency. I have experience working with our partners at the state to actually get results for Nashvillians. We're electing a mayor, someone to be the CEO of this city. And that involves a whole bunch of different skills. But one of them is sitting down with people who sometimes you don't agree with, listening to them, building relationships, finding common ground, and getting things done. I believe I have the background and the skill set to do that for Nashville. Now, let me be very clear. We do not compromise our principles. You stand firmly on your principles, but you work to get things done. I'm Matt Wilshire. I'd appreciate your vote. Thank you. Council member. Communication is everything. It is understanding and it's being understood. I grew up when Democrats and Republicans worked together. I believe we can do that. We just got to talk about it. You know, I'm a downtown Rotarian and I would invite them and many of them come to speak, but I would invite them to go by the four way test because this time is always right to do right. And that is, is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? And will it be beneficial to all concerned? I would ask and challenge them to do that every day in every decision that they make. I will build relationships and find common ground. And I will talk to my female colleagues and legislators and make sure that we can have those alignments. And for those male colleagues and legislators, if I can't talk to them, I'll talk to their wives. <laughs> thank, thank you, council member. You can always. Senator. <laughs> You know, this is one of the reasons that our first elected position should probably not be as mayor of a, of a world-class city. Um, you know, uh, this is like anything else about relationships. And um, I have spent the past few years developing relationships in the Senate with my colleagues across the aisle and passed 80 pieces of legislation. And they know that I'm accessible. They know that my door is open and they also know that I will stand up for Nashvillians above all else and stand up for our values. But a lot of it is about accessibility. And I am the only candidate here that is endorsed by my legislative colleagues and also uh, municipal electeds uh, because they know that I tell the truth, they know they can trust me, they know how hard I work, and they know that I'm able to get things done. The most uh, valuable lesson I had on this particular issue was serving in the Greater Nashville Regional Council on the Mayor's Caucus, where I worked with rural mayors to get stuff done because in the final analysis, we didn't care about ideological issues. We cared about the nuts and bolts issues of our streets, trash, um, the things that matter in everybody's day-to-day -day life. And, um, and I think it's important that we have somebody that can calm down the conversation and, um, and get us back to talking you, about Senator. things that actually make life better for people. Thank you, and thank you to each candidate for taking part. We have used our time wisely. We are out of time. Thank you for joining us tonight, and thank you to Belmont University for very capable staff and a beautiful venue. Join us for our next debate coming up on June 22nd. And David, it's been a pleasure working with you. Likewise, Karen. We look forward to see what happens on the campaign trail. Good luck to everyone. <laughs>